So, Mike, we've moved on to uh, the Sankei. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I kind of always think that Sankei are the hardest to get the whole package. Um, more yeah. complicated for everything to come right. Um, I think the the placement of the Sumi and the Benny patterns very much more critical on Sankei than, than on Showa, for example. Mm. Um, much less forgiving in, in terms of where the Sumi falls yeah, I in, so. in relation to the Benny. Um, so can you tell us what we're looking at here in terms of, of breeders? Um, these are all actually the same breeder. Um, these are all Matsue fish. Um, I'm not sure offhand, but I think they are all, all from the same parent set. There might be actually two, two parents at play with these. Um, but the age of the fish is all the same. I'd say the age, I'm talking about the birth month as it were, as opposed to toe sign, knee sign. Okay, in, in terms of, in terms of Sanke, is there anything specific that you, you're looking for, um, obviously, uh, disregarding the Sumi aspect of it? Sure. Uh, in terms of, if you're looking at Kahaku and Sanke, um, and which would get Jumbo, um, anything different in, in, in the style of the fish you'd be looking for to start with? Um... Difficult question, but certainly um, the bodies, I think, are less predictable. Um, it's easy, I think, to look at Kahaku and say, oh yeah, this is going to get big, this one will build the body, and so on. Um, I think Sankey are a lot more harder to predict just how well um, they'll sort of grow up and how they put body on. To give you an example, what I mean is that I've seen fish in the past with, t with uh, body types, if you say, as tosai or nisai, whereby you look at the fish and you think, oh yeah, this is good, it's really, really nice. But with that particular lineage, although it looks like it's going to put on weight and it will build a big body and grow really big, some of those fish with sankey, you can get fish that grow really, really big, really, really easily, but you just can't put the weight on them. Um, and in some cases, although those fish might have looked really strong framed as nisai with really nice height and so on, you'll find that when you grow the fish jumbo, that frame almost seems to kind of weaken. You tend to look, uh, the fish look when it grows up as though they're no longer capable of putting on that body weight. That kind of thickness and hollowness to the backbone kind of thing kind of disappears as a fish grows up and then maybe um, as a big fish you've got something that you kind of looks more like a snake as it were than something that's got a really nice body to it. Some fish are just, the lineage itself is kind of inherently really, really hard to build a good body on. So. I think in that regard, Sankey are particularly difficult. Um, the other thing I think with Sankey is that the colour is also kind of more critical. It's more easy to get like terry weaknesses within the colour on Sankey, whereby you've got fish, let's say, as Tosar on these side, that they look like they're all of a similar grade um, and maybe just a subtle difference in colour that actually when it grows up will dramatically move in different directions. So that one that looks slightly better will become much better. That one that looks almost as good perhaps will go in the opposite direction and just go downhill and work out no good. Whereas with Kahaku, you'll actually find that maybe that one where the colour maybe looked a little bit softer or maybe perhaps not so good, when the fish grows up, doesn't really make much difference, um, you know, in the regards to, let's say, two fish from the same parent set. Um, with Sankey, as I say, it's a lot less forgiving. You'll get fish where one's almost as good as the other, but they just go in completely different directions when the fish grow up. Um, so it does make it difficult, sure as well, but obviously right now we're on Sankey. Um, I'm still trying to look for the same things when it looks, uh, when we're talking about body type. Um, still trying to look for the same qualities as well when we're talking about colour, sashi, kiwa and so on. Um, but it is inherently, I think, a lot harder to get it right with Sankey, as you've already said. So you mentioned on, uh, you touched on bloodlines and lineage a bit. Um, I think we've almost, with Sanke, Matsunosuke was one of the, the famous bloodlines. Um, and with Matsunosuke fish, there was always this thing about um, they're slender to start with and they'll gain body later. Is that what you're kind of talking about with, re with regards to pr unpredictability of the body? A little bit, yeah. Um, like some of those fish maybe are slim, but you can see the body type is basically right and it will build up, but you might find another breeder's fish have got exactly the same looking body and you'll think oh yeah I, I can expect the same thing of this it's going to get big and when it gets big it will then start putting the bulk on but that breeder's fish just won't do it i'm not talking about let's say matsunoski or not matsunoski but certainly comparables whereby you know you take a fish on face value 
and you think it's going to do the same thing because on the, the face value of it, but in reality, it just doesn't. It never measures up to what you hoped it was going to do. Okay, so one of the things that's often been said about Sanke in the past is you have a good Kahaku pattern or a good Beko and they mix the two together and that gives you a good Sanke. Um, I think that's a bit of a myth, isn't it? Um, it is really. Um, and it's kind of like you said as well, it's kind of that lack of predictability of Sumi placement and also Sumi development for that matter, um, which can kind of make or break Sanke. Um, you can get something with that good Kahaku pattern, you don't really know where the Sumi is going to come, but later on it all could come in the wrong kind of places and effectively spoil the overall appearance of the fish. So, Perhaps one of the, the, the rules of thumbs that I is often overlooked by people, um, is actually considered very important, certainly by breeders, um, is, is the placement of the sumi and where it falls. Yeah. And um, that particularly being the fact that it falls on the white ground. Yeah. Um, important with both Sanke and, and Showa. Yes, indeed. Very much so. Hmm. Um, and we see lots of what appear to be very nice quality Sanke. But when you analyse them very closely, that sumi falls on the red. Yeah. Um, and actually, in, in terms of quality, uh, that's something that, that really does knock the, the level down a significant, a significant notch. Yeah. Um, I think, um, certainly, I think yourself, Mark, you can look at one or two fish in the past, let's say Sankey at the All Japan, that maybe have been kind of somewhat you could look at them as a kahaku pattern and say it's somewhat lacking, somewhat imbalanced, but the sumi placement is what effectively makes a fish. Um, and I think to some degree this is kind of one of those fish. I say to some degree, you'd look at the fish as a kahaku pattern and say that the back end of the fish is just too lonely. Um, and I think in this case, the sumi placement of the fish is such that it's making up for that lack of colour, if you like. It's, it's putting the balance back into the equation where the kahaku pattern is a little bit lacking. Um, for me, I think the sumi placement on this is very nice, particularly on the shoulder area. And like I say, the tail tube area, it kind of is placed where the colour isn't, where you would ideally want the colour if you were looking for a kahaku pattern. Okay, so let, let's start looking at some of these fish individually, Mike. Um, in terms of overall prospect for, for what would become good, what, what would you rate as the number one koi here? Um, I think as a style of fish, this one, I think, is potentially the nicest um, as a big fish when the sumi's up. But for me, the colour on this one is harder to predict. It's harder for me to look at this and say that it's for certain going to be good later on. I think in that regard, this is really the strongest one. Um, with kahaku, I would tend to favour kind of softer, thicker colour. But in the case of this group of sanki, although this one's colour is redder, I think the actual quality of this one is kind of the toughest as far as growing up and keeping a good kind of terry appearance to the colour. Um, I think this is overall, I think, the nicest package, um, for me anyway. Um, after that, I think this one I think is pretty good. Um, but it will be, again, it will be, with this one it's a somewhat simple three-step pattern. Nothing really wrong with it, but when I bought this as Tosai there wasn't really much sumi there whatsoever. And already it's kind of developing quite quickly. And on the whole, I think the placement of the sumi will be quite good. Um, so I think this is a pretty decent prospect overall. Um, this one, to my mind, um, I think the colour on this is pretty good. I think it will last well. I think the sumi quality is nice. But for my own personal preference, I think the sumi is just kind of a little bit too bold around this shoulder area. Um, I think what will happen, I think, is later on this will just get thicker and heavier. But the tail tube, I don't think it will really develop an awful lot of sumi. So I think maybe it might be, perhaps in the future, a little bit overpowering in this area. And a little bit lacking towards the back end. Um, but I think overall, right now, it, it's not a bad fish. But it is difficult to get right. Um, one that I do find quite interesting, I think, is this one, though. Um, the pattern's kind of a little bit flowery. Um, and you might say, in some regards, you know, the back end of the fish, again, there's not that much colour to it. But my own personal feeling with this fish is that the quality of the sumi is pretty good and the placement's pretty good. And I think overall, in the long run, I think this one's going to end up as a really kind of attractive fish that a lot of people will like 
I think very easily as a bigger fish. Um, this one here, um, it's again kind of similar style to that one, um, but the sachet on this one is somewhat lets it down. Um, like in this area here, this isn't really likely to tidy up. This area also won't really tidy up later on. Um, so those kind of technical points, if you like. With Sankey, you'll get away with slightly compared to Kahaku, but I think overall there are a few kind of weak points with this fish that later on, I just don't think the fish is really going to make the grade so easily. Um, Sumi placement's okay, but in this case, you haven't really, I think, got the case where that sumi is going to add balance where the pattern was lacking. I think you'll still end up when the sumi on this fish comes up with a fish where it's not actually really complementing the pattern as such. It's just not a fantastic looking fish. It won't just have the same kind of imposing nature, I think, of the likes of these two when the sumi are up. I think these two, the style of the fish, will be much, much nicer when that sumi is up later on. You mentioned um, about the, the, the benny being difficult to predict on, on one of the fish earlier. Yeah. Uh, can you give some ideas why uh, that would be more difficult to predict um, I think compared to one that you find more predictable, for example? Right. I think sometimes with Sanku as opposed to Kahaku, you can look at the colour and think, well, right now that colour is fantastic. Um, and likewise, you can look at another Sanku and maybe slightly dismiss it and say, well, actually, you know what? The colour is maybe not so good. But what can happen with Sankey quite easily is that one that you thought was perfect, that had really nice thick terry to it, maybe later on, a year or two later, starts to develop some sort of terry weakness or, let's say, incomplete um, pigment within a scale. Um, whereas the one that maybe you thought was actually a weaker fish, the colour can actually consolidate more and a year later you look at the fish and you think, well, you know what, I completely misjudged it. Um, and I think in that case, this is a fish that right now, the quality of the colour doesn't look that good. The terry doesn't look fantastic um, on one or two other scales, like this scale the colour is kind of incomplete um, and one or two other scales as well. Um, and also the colour there is not actually in the fruit as such um, on these couple of scales, but I think that later on that colour can creep and fill in and the colour overall can kind of thicken up a lot more and then you can just look at it and think, well, you know what, it's actually a lot better than what I thought. So there's one, one fish in here particularly Mike that we mentioned we discussed earlier off camera which you felt was a lot weaker than the others yes which may not be obviously apparent to people who are, are looking at the video at the moment maybe looking at that and well it brings us back to what I said with the kahaku you've got one fish amongst all those fish um, that effectively is a sibling but um, a significantly weaker sibling um, and that's the case with these sanku this is let's say Tatesta, it's a fish that the breeder felt wasn't really making the grade. Not a bad fish, but let's get rid of it. We don't want to be keeping this until Nisai kind of approach. Um, now, some people, I think, would quite easily look at that fish and let's say compare it to this one and say, well, you know what? This one's skin quality is better, it's whiter. Well, it's not skin quality at all. It's really looking at the reverse. What I'm saying is part of it is condition. Um, this fish and this fish, let's say both of those, the skin, the skin is ever so slightly muddy and that's a condition thing, not a quality thing. And when we look at this smaller one, the skin's actually really, really snow white. But if we look at the back end of the fish, you can also see that around this area, that skin is somewhat kind of translucent. You can almost see the flesh um, beneath the skin, if you like, where that um, skin quality just kind of lacks thickness and lacks shine. So it's white, but it's not actually high quality, whereas this one, the quality of the skin is a little bit muddy, a little bit creamy, but this quality is actually much better, much thicker, and later on, this kind of skin will be a completely different league um, to this smaller sibling. Um, so, the point being that if you looked at, let's say, a dozen fish, um, but they were all of this kind of quality, this kind of size, and you were led to believe that this was the breeder's best fish, this is how his fish always are, then it's easy to say, well, okay, maybe this is the best one from that bunch of fish. But when you look at this fish alongside a much better example, a much superior example, then suddenly the whole thing is thrown into context. In actual fact, this isn't that good fish after all, because the, the better examples are so much bigger and so much better. Okay, so uh, if we, we, we kind of wrap this up with a... Uh 
rating of a, a grading of one to six, what were we looking at in your opinion as the best prospects in that respect? Um, in that respect, I think it's between this one and this one. But one I think is very safe, and the other one I think has got a lot of potential. Um, so this one really, I think, is an easy, reliable fish. It's easy for it to be good, easy for everything to come right. This fish, if it comes right, I think will be a better fish. Um, but there's more risk with it. There's more of a question mark over just how good it would be. Um, that kind of colour being a little bit softer, the terry looking slightly weaker, that can all change. So they're really, in a way, kind of level pegging. One is the safe bet and one is the high risk, higher potential bet, if you like. Um, so it could go completely wrong. You could wish you'd never bought it, but on the other hand, you could in a year or two's time look at that fish and say, wow, it's in a different league altogether now. It's so much better. Um, so really those two at the top, um, this three step, I think, um, although it's simple, I think it's a very good, um, sort of safe and reliable one that's easy for people to like, I think as a third place. Um, and I would put this one really in the same position. But I think this is one of those fish whereby later on that sumi will complement where the pattern falls or perhaps where the pattern is lacking and make that fish look better on, better later on. So that one I would place next. Um, and then after that, we're down to this one, the one with the really heavy and potentially, I think, overpowering shoulder sumi. Um, that one I think is next in line. Um, the red eyes kind of detract from it a little bit, but even if it didn't have red eyes or red in the eyes at all, I still think um, later on it just won't be that nice. Um, after that, we're down to this one, which right now it looks good, but I think when you grow this fish up and you look at it, I think where the sumi comes, it won't really be making up for lack, lack of pattern. I think it will always be a little bit imbalanced still. And then last but not least, the cheap sibling. I mean, this is a kind of fish, ordinarily I wouldn't like to buy this kind of fish, but the thing is, we always find that people, they want to come here, they want to buy fish. And some people, um, they just simply won't come. They won't come, they won't see the fish, they won't buy fish because they're afraid that everything's just going to be too expensive. So my way of thinking is that if I can get a few cheap fish um, and get them here that people can afford, that will give people a decent amount of fun, then they'll actually come here for the first time. And then once they're here, maybe they'll see those better fish. They won't buy them, but at least they've seen it. And nobody knows really where hobbyists will be a few years down the line. So that person that maybe is looking at this fish, they might only be in the hobby for two or three years when they're buying this fish. But maybe a few years down the line, they'll learn a lot more, they'll keep fish really well. And before you know it, those are the same people that are actually looking for this fish. So you can't dismiss a hobbyist as being not good enough to buy your fish. To my mind, you've got to kind of try and just get a few fish of the caliber, let, let's say as an entry level to get people here so that then they can see what it's all about. Because like I say, later on in life, they might be the very same people that otherwise you just never catered for in the beginning.